And I would like you just to uh, honor uh, Justin Abraham by just inviting him, by honoring him with a clap offering and just <laughs> welcome him. Justin, we love you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Ruth. It's good to be here. Thank you, Father. Well, let's just engage his presence right now. Father, thank you. Ah. Ah. Whew. That's it. Lord, help us. Expand us. Take us deeper than we've ever been before. To see things we've never seen before. That we will plunge into the limitless ocean. Isaac Newton, the famous scientist, he said something interesting. He said, I do not know what I may, may appear to this world, but to myself, I seem to have only been like a boy playing on the seashore, finding a smoother pebble or prettier shell than ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. God is looking for a generation that don't just settle for little pebbles. He wants those that will plunge into the limitless ocean, the divine ocean, and get lost in the mystery Get lost in the wonder and see things that are so beyond you that you can't contain the ecstasy. You can't contain the joy. You can't contain the wonder. See, we can't, be, we can't just be satisfied with good theology. Good theology has to lead you into an experience. See, you can't just like, for example, know that his body, which is broken for you, is just a symbol. You have to move into the, the reality of eating his body. The reality of eating. You can't just know that we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. And then not live in that reality where we're surrounded by heaven. See, we have to move beyond being on the seashore looking at pebbles. And God is looking for the courageous who will plunge into the limitless ocean and change the world that we know. Change reality as we know it. Bend it back to the truth. Wow. Oh. So I believe this is a company of people here tonight that want to plunge this morning, that want to plunge into the limitless one. That you're here because you're not satisfied with pebbles. You're not satisfied with being on the seashore. If you were satisfied, you wouldn't be here right now. You're here because you want to plunge into the divine. You want to plunge into the mystery. You want to plunge into the wonder. You want to plunge into places you've never been before. See things you've never seen before. Ha. So, thank you, Jesus. I'll try not to get too, you know, wrecked by Jesus' love. I'll try... I'll try and just have a little drink, just for your sake. Paul said, if I'm sober, it's for you. <laughs> he said, if I'm out of my mind, and the word he used is ek dystemi, and it means ek being out of my body, histemi. If I'm out of my body in ecstasies, it's for God's glory. Wow. That's what he said. New translations are now not using the word besides myself. They're saying, if I'm in ecstasy. If I'm out of my body or out of my mind, it's for God's glory. But he says, if I'm sober or if I'm of sound mind, I'm doing it for your sake. So I want you to know this morning, if I'm sober and of sound mind, it's because I'm pulling back from my joy cup just to administrate truth to you because I want you to go deeper than you've gone before. The Father's heart is that this would be a reformation community, that this would be a revelatory community, that this would be a breaker community, that this would be a supernatural community. And I'm not just talking about a little bit of supernatural. I'm talking about blowing your minds because where we're going, where you're going, where we're going as a company of people is beyond our current realm of revelation. See, revelation is what you know in your past, 
but mystery is where you're going in your future. See, revelation is what we know. Mystery is where we're expanding. And Bill Johnson, the great apostle, you know, at Bethel in Reading, says this, that we have to have embrace, as much as we embrace revelation, we have to be a community that embrace mystery. Why am I saying this? Because I'm actually speaking into your house that you are about to go into mysteries like you never have before. You are going into mystery and wonder and joy like you never have before. This means there's not a person here that's been this way before. There's not a person here that stepped where this nation is going, where this planet is going. We're going places we've never been to see things we've never seen. He, we go from strength to strength, grace to grace, life to life. In your light, we see light. So you're about to journey so much deeper that I want you to, to celebrate mystery. Because the, the old church system will try and say, you need to explain this. You need to explain this. No, you don't have to explain this. This is beyond explanation. This is beyond human words. This is beyond a human message. That's why they're called wonders. They're called signs and wonders. Wow. Yeah. And we're moving into a day of wonder, which means we have to enjoy wonder. See, often God will do something in your life, but he won't explain it to you on that day. That's why it's called the walk of faith, not of sight. That's why it's called trust in the Lord with all your heart, not your understanding. Because you're about to have experiences that maybe he won't even explain it to you. I want you to know he does not owe you an explanation. The Bible is full of people that had to do things and they didn't have a clue why they were doing it. The whole tabernacle was a picture of Jesus, but they didn't know that. They had to live in mystery every single day. And we're a generation that's trying to get the answer more than the substance. See, we have to be, move from being experts into those that walk in wonder, walk in mystery, walk in power, walk in glory. Where there are no experts, there are only those who trust in the Lord with all their heart. That of themselves, they can do nothing. If we can do it of ourselves, we're living in a lower level of life and joy. We need to go to a place where there's amazing grace. So in these days, God's going to do things that will be beyond us, and it's not the, they, these guys' fault. You can't blame the leaders of this church for God deciding to pour out His Spirit. You can't bl blame people if it doesn't start to look like you want it, because God's not shaping it around you. He's shaping it around His heart, His desire, and His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are greater than our thoughts. And I'm happy about that, because I am fed up of being bored. I am fed up of being bored. And I think it's time that what we see is so glorious that nations come to the brightness of our rising. See, they're not going to come to church as it's been. There's something beyond it that we've never seen that he wants to take us into the mystery and joy and wonder that he is God. He is God. He is God. And he cannot be contained. He cannot be restrained. He cannot be limited or understood. No one can own him. No one can steer him. No one can control him. Whoa. <laughs> and I'm excited about that. I'm excited that we're about to see the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. I'm excited that no one can contain what God is doing in the earth. He is pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. All flesh. All flesh. All flesh. All flesh. Ah. So uh, there's a woman in the States called Patricia King. And some of you may know her. She has a website, Extreme Prophetic. She wrote this, and it's a brilliant quote. I want to quote it. It says, perhaps some of what the Lord is about to do will shock and awe many people. Listen, God is not like we think. He's more fun. He's actually a comedian. How do I know he's a comedian? 
Just look at the person next to you. <laughs> God is crazier and wilder than we imagine. The things he does do to defy rational explanation. When I was in the UK, it was Father's Day, and I was going to go to Scotland to do some meetings. And I said to my children for Father's Day, I would like a rubber duck. Do you guys know what a rubber duck is? A rubber duck, quack, quack. You know, you have them in the bath. They're really cool. See, I think there's a lot of glory on rubber ducks, a lot of glory. So I said I wanted a rubber duck. When I went to my hotel in Scotland, this will offend some of you, but I hope that's okay, because we have to offend the mind to open the heart. The, do you think God loves me so much that he play a joke on me? When I went to Scotland in my hotel, God materialized a beautiful blue rubber duck on my bed and had a fragrance of vanilla that lasted for two years. See, now I thought that was awesome. It said made in China. So how, well, how did it get there? This was the amazing thing. I posted it on Facebook and another prophet called Kathy Walters, saw my duck picture, and she said, you've got one of my ducks. Whoa. And I'm like, what do you mean? Well, she showed me a picture of her collection of ducks. She, she said, the other day, an angel came and stole three of my ducks, and I think God has given you one of my ducks. Can I have it back? And I was like, there's no way you're having that duck back. That's my duck. See, I was preaching on this, and I, I, I did a conference in Germany with four or five hundred people, and I bought some cute rubber ducks, and I was throwing them out as I was sharing the story. Now, for some, it was joy. They were going, yeah, why wouldn't God give me rubber duck? Why wouldn't God do fun things? Why can't things appear in my room? You know, we, uh, our old worship leader, she was an 18-year-old girl. We had her live in my house. She wanted gemstones. God would just make them appear in her room when she was worshiping. I did another conference in France, and there was a girl there that really wanted a gemstone, and it didn't happen. But when she was going home, she stopped at the restaurant, and when she opened the sachet of sauce, a diamond fell out. Wow. See, the diamond's in the sauce. It's in the, there's, there's, there's hidden things. Wow. See, will we be offended by this? See, when I was preaching in Germany to these 400 people, 500 people on the ducks, to some they were grabbing the rubber ducks and going, yay, I get it, I understand heaven. But the pastor who owned the building, a Russian pastor, said, you will never, ever speak in this church ever again, he said to me. And I was like, why? He said, God would never give someone a rubber duck. I turned to him and said, well, he gave you a face like one. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a joke. I didn't actually say that. That would be really bad. <laughs> but what am I saying? What am I saying? Where you guys are going as a church, don't be offended at God's humor. Don't be offended at his joy. Don't be offended that he's going to do crazy stuff that, you, that would offend you. Like, why would an angel go to all that effort to steal Kathy Walters' duck to give it to me? Because he loves us, and he wants us to have a happy life, a crazy life. He doesn't want you having a boring life. He came for John 10, 10. I came that you might have life, and life in abundance. He wants you to have a crazy life. He wants you to have so many stories. Your kids, your grandchildren will be talking about it at the dinner table. That they're not on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. They're talking about, did you see this? Did you see that? Listen, this is how crazy it is. Recently, I've been praying to see angels more. Now, I've met many angels, but I want to be just like Jesus. Jesus sees angels every day. As he is, so am I. So for me, it's not okay that I see an angel and then a month later I see an angel. For me, that's lower than Jesus. Jesus is the standard. I will not lower my standard to my experience. I will raise my standard to Jesus Christ because he is the author and perfect and finisher. And as he is, so am I. And how often does Jesus see angels? Every day. So I want to see them every day. So recently I've been praying for this and these feathers have been appearing. But this is a crazy story. I was sitting on the settee with my wife, the sofa, and she said, there's something wrong with your eye. 
And she reached over and she pulled a feather out of my eye. A feather. It was the weirdest thing. But I'm happy about that because he wants to open our eyes again. He wants our eyes to see again. He wants us to experience things again. If I'm offending you, you know, this is an interesting thing. People say to Bill Johnson, I just want what's in the Bible. I just want what's in the Bible, brother. (laughs) Now, some of you might be saying that right now. But I want you to know this, that the Bible is full of weird, weird stuff. Picking up Ezekiel by his hair. Jesus turning into a lamb with seven eyes and seven horns. We're saying, Jesus, come in the room. What would happen if Jesus came in the room looking like that? (laughs) It'd be like, okay, not that Jesus. But he can look like a lamb with seven eyes and seven horns. I mean, can you really handle God? Maybe some of you won't want to go where we're going next. But I believe it's going to be glorious. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be so supernatural. You won't even know what to do with it. But will you be offended when he shows up? Because Jesus said, you will not see me again unless you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. In other words, your ability to see him will be to the extent that you embrace the form he comes. Because he will come in ways that you haven't expected and he will come in ways that you've never seen and he'll be standing right in front of you. Yeah. Are we okay so far? Are you guys with me? Okay, let me finish Patricia King's quote then. Perhaps some of what the Lord is about to do will shock and awe many. As in past historical moves of revolution, there will be those that resist and harden their hearts, desiring to hold on to the old ways and mindsets. Change is often difficult because it forces us to rethink hardened opinions and be willing to remove ourselves from the rut of comfortable lifestyles. Where we're going now isn't going to be comfortable. It says, great grace and great fear were upon them all. You're a great grace church. I've got a word for you. You're going to have great fear on you all. And that fear is an ecstasy. It's a delight in God's nature. Great grace, great fear. It says, knowing the fear of God and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. They had such a powerful revelation of God. They needed God to hug them and hold them whilst they were seeing God. Come on, come on, come on. Ah. However, in spite of those who resist the revolution, there will be those who embrace it, jumping on board and following Jesus into new and uncharted territory. (laughs) Some things that God will manifest in these days have never been done before. Things that will stretch our imagination and challenge our intellect. So listen, we're in a day where technology is exploding, right? You, we've had to have new words even. Google, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, smartphones. In the same token, the spirit world is now opening. It's a parallel of what's happening in the spirit. Or to put it another way, I'll pour out my spirit and there will be visions and dreams and revelations and experiences. What am I saying? You simply cannot understand the days we're living in if you don't understand that it's also going to be marked by an expansion of revelation and mystery and knowledge. We're going for ball band. We're going from, you know, this tiny flow into a new place. We need new words. We need new language because the spirit world is actually bigger than the scene. So if in the seen world, we've had to have Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, we've had to create new words. We need to start creating new vocabulary for the things we're seeing in the spirit because we need new language because things are coming from heaven that have never even been seen before. We've been praying for 2000 years. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord spoke to me recently. He said, son, this thing's going to start appearing in earth that have never existed in earth before. And I said, Lord, I need a verse for that. He said, that's fine. Do you remember when Noah had the rainbow? The rainbow had always been around my throne, but only then did I make it known. 
See, there are things in heaven that no eye has seen that are going to start coming upon the earth. Things that will blow your brains, fry your transistors. Days of awe and wonder are returning to the earth again. Where it says, once more I will shake the nations and they will come to the desire of the nations. They will come to the desire of the nations. Where the stadiums will be filled. And the acts of glory and power will be beyond anything we've known. So he's looking for what kind of mindset do we need to embrace this? Well, we need, a, we need a courageous mindset. See, the problem with unbelief is it's, it's, it, it, it always gets what it expects. And, well, and it's faith in the inferior. I don't want to have faith in the inferior. I believe in the unseen. I set my mind on the unseen. I believe that we're going to see crazy stuff. Like, I'm just speaking into the atmosphere, but people in this church are going to start to get younger. You will mark my words. You'll see this take place. You are going to see, because great grace is coming on the body. I'm pouring out my spirit on flesh. And one of the signs in this church is they're going to say, this is becoming the healthiest group of people in the city. The healthiest group of people in the city. You're going to start to see, you're going to say to someone, you look younger. In fact, I look, I was looking at a photo of you from three years ago, and you are so much younger than you look in that photograph. People are going to start to find a restoration of strength, virtue, and energy. Because in these days, he's going to fill his body with life and more life and life and abundant life. You're going to start to have flashes of light in your room as angels come in the bedroom at night. You think you're going to have normal sleeps? You're not. He's going to awaken me by morning, by morning, day and night. My heart is awakened. He's going to awaken you to knowledge, awaken you to understanding. You're going to know stuff you didn't know. You're going to go to bed one night and you don't know it. The next day you'll know quantum physics. That's what happened to me. See, that's what happened. That's what happened to Solomon. In one night, Solomon had a small heart and he didn't know how to govern a nation. He didn't know wealth management. He didn't know how to manage a big team. And it says, in one dream, God expanded his heart like the sand on the seashore so that nothing was impossible for him. And there was so much glory on him that the whole city became rich. I'm prophesying this is going to be the richest city In the Philippines, there is a wealth of Solomon being poured out here, poured out on you. Mark my words, I give you permission to be wealthy. I give you permission, because as goes the head, so goes the body. You guys should be trading into them. The more money you give them, the more it's opening over you. That's a spiritual principle. Honor your fathers and mothers that it might go well with you. What you release will increase. What you sow, you will reap. As goes the head, so goes the body. These guys are moving house. I want them to have the best kitchen. The Lord gave me a word for them. I I didn't even know they were moving house. I said, I think you're going to be moving house. They said, didn't you know we're moving house? Yeah, and I said, God wants you to spend lots of money on the kitchen. And you said to me that the kitchen is where you, you hang out with Jesus. Listen, who wants to trade into their new kitchen? Listen, I, the, the, the kitchen is the heart of the home. I'm challenging you. I want you guys. I want you guys for your sake, for the sake of your heart. So into their kitchen. I want their kitchen to be the most glorious kitchen. There we go. Some money's popping now. Some money's popping now. I'm going to trade into your kitchen right now. I'm not ashamed of this because I understand the spirit realm. I understand how the the realm of the kingdom works. It's just going to keep coming. You guys don't know how the supernatural works. I do. I totally get the supernatural. It's just going to keep popping. Come on, just try it. See, I know how the supernatural works. I've had money appear in my hands. I've had money appear on my bed, all sorts of stuff. It's, I'll tell you a principle. Release and you will increase. Release and you will increase. I want these guys to be so blessed because because of them, the whole city is going to be blessed. The whole city is going to be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Pop that kitchen. Lord, I want that kitchen to be glorious. 
Does anybody work on kitchens here? Okay, some of you guys need to volunteer to be the kitchen refurbishment team. Who, who volunteers? Who vol stand up if you volunteer to help refurbish the kitchen. No one's standing. Come on, stand up someone that wants to help them paint or refurbish. New tiles. Come on, guys, you've stood up now, so Jesus knows. I see that, I see that hand. I see that hand. <laughs> wow, I'm not afraid of being extreme. Listen, I'm breaking mindsets right now. Because all when you're holding on to your money, it's to do with the fact that you're living off your resources. I stopped doing that a long time. I, had a, I realized that if, as I go, it flows. As I release, it increases. I don't live off anyone's wage or anyone's payments. I live off Jesus' wage, Jesus' payment, and in him, I'm blessed beyond all imagination. Thank you, Father. <laughs> See, it's coming. It's multiplication. Multiplication. This is justice for you guys. You're in a season of justice and honor. We honor you. Honor your father and mothers that it might go well with you. I can just see you having a lovely kitchen full of glory. Lord, I just pray that so much gold dust would cover that kitchen time after time. I have a friend, he's a potter, and God started making the gold dust appear on the clay. And then he puts the coating on and the gold dust is sealed in the design. Artwork from heaven. Artwork from heaven. You know, one day I was ironing the clothes, my children's clothes, for school. And gold dust covered all of the clothes. I ran upstairs. It was nine o'clock at night. And I woke Joshua up. I said, Josh, get out of bed. God's blinging up your school uniform. He jumped out of bed. We held it in the light. And we were, we were, it was a red uniform. We were just moving it in the light. And it was shimmering with gold dust. Shimmering. How many of you guys iron and do things like that? Listen, there's glory on ironing. There's going to be glory on housewives, glory on the kitchen, glory in the home. This isn't a church thing. It's a whole planet being changed into a new form where earth and heaven are one. Earth and heaven are one. Kitchen angels, glory angels, angels at the dentist checking out your teeth. See, we have to move into an era where we walk by faith, not by understanding. Understanding has gone as far as we can go. But as we walk by faith, he reveals to us the truth through relationship. And he wants you to walk with him beyond where you're comfortable to see him do things you could never do alone. Because of yourself, you can do nothing. But he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond what you ask or even dare to think. But he doesn't violate your will. He says, come. See, love isn't forced. Love is an invitation. I'm just giving you an invitation today. I'm giving you an invitation from Yahweh to journey into a life beyond your control. A life that is thrilling, mysterious, beautiful, and powerful. Because he didn't come that you might just have an ordinary life and be an ordinary human. He came that you might have abundant life, crazy life, wild life. How much time have I got? Am I nearly done? How long have I got left? 10, 15 minutes. Thank you, Father. You guys all right? Yeah. This is what they said to, of Jesus. Seeing how Jesus operated, they said this. We have seen wonderful and strange and incredible and unthinkable things today. If we want to be just like Jesus, we have to realize you're going to become the wonder. Wow. Oh my, that's, good. that's why it says, arise and shine. So many times I've been the wonder. I've gone into a restaurant and they're saying, who are you? What are you? I recently had to get a car to hire a car, lend a car. 
And when I went there, the presence was so strong on me, the woman who gave me the car, when she asked me to the counter, she said, who are you? No, she said, what are you? Whoa. Yeah. So we have to be willing. Okay, I'm going to stretch you some more now. Can I go a bit further with the logic of what I'm saying? Okay, I'm going to go further with the logic, and I want to show you the kind of mindset that you need to have. There's this incredible story in Scripture, in Numbers 21, where Moses and the people of Israel, the people of Israel were complaining against Moses. So God released fiery serpents, and they were getting sick because they were getting bit by fiery serpents. So Moses goes into the heavenlies. He appeals to the Lord and says, Lord, what must I do to help stop this plague from breaking out? What, how many of you guys know your Bible well? What did, what did the Lord ask him to do? He asked him to make a bronze snake and hold it up. And everyone who looked at that snake would get healed. Do you guys have a problem with this? I do. Because at that moment in time, Satan was the serpent. And they were told not to make idols. Not to make bronze idols. Not to look at idols. And he, Moses has to do something that completely contradicts his box. He has to do something that doesn't fit in his box to obey Yahweh. This is where we're going, guys. This is where we're going, is that we have to know the Lord so closely. We know him so intimately face to face that when he tells you to move outside of your comfort zone, you're going to do it. Because this is the thing. When they looked at that serpent, they all got healed. But listen, Israel did not have an answer to the puzzle for over 200 years until Jesus came along. And said, just like the serpent was lifted up, a symbol of a curse, a symbol of death, a symbol of destruction, a symbol of idolatry. Just as that was lifted up and it's healed you, I am going to be lifted up on the cross. I am going to be lifted up and I am going to take something that's a curse, something that's abhorrent, something that's destructive. And I am going to release salvation through what the enemy meant for evil. I'm going to release life. I'm going to, sorry, I'm spitting on you. This glory spit. Just get an impartation of my DNA. You just had an upgrade. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So Jesus is going to start using stuff that the church thinks there's nothing that good can come out of it. Can any good come out of Nazareth? Can any good come out of Galilee? Can any good come out of all this stuff, this, all this stuff in the world? Listen, truth's going to come out of it. Revelation's going to come out of it. We're going to discover what God wants us to know. Treasures in darkness. I don't want to offend you guys, so I'm trying to work out how far I can go in stretching you. But God wants us to understand things that the church has never embraced. I'll give you one thing. Heaven is full of crystals. Crystal sea, crystal foundations, and crystals on the chest, right? It's full of crystal frequency technology. Now, pastors will say, oh, crystals are new age, crystals are evil, crystals are occult. Then they'll use their phone, which is, or watch, that has quartz crystals in it. They'll go, is it nearly time for dinner? I'll look at my quartz watch. Quartz. Do you know that your iPhone is crystalline? It runs off crystals. So what is crystal? What is crystals? Technology. Crystals are technology. Heaven is full of technology. So who's going to start to discover how to use the technology that he's created? Who's going to discover what the frequency of crystals are for? Because the, IT, the technical companies are doing it. I'll give you another example. Oils. People have said oils is new age. We can't touch oils. And yet there are 1,300 verses on oils. And yet religion has said it's evil. But let me ask you this. This is a very good question to ask. Why does it say in Scripture, pray for the sick and anoint them with oil? Because if they're going to get healed, why do you need to anoint them with oil? Come on. 
I'll tell you why. Because oils like frankincense and lavender and these other oils, they change the frequency of the human body and they move it out of low frequency into high frequency where you can't get sick. So the healing came through the prayer, but frequency realignment came through the oil. Listen, you know, in the old churches, they used to walk and they used to have a cloud of frankincense. And people used to, they say, oh, that's religion. Listen, I'll tell you something. I watched a lecture by a scientist who's not a Christian. Frankincense is one of the most powerful virus killing substances on the earth. He released 250 viruses into a room and then put frankincense smoke in. It killed every virus in the room. So what were they doing when they were walking along? Killing every disease in that room. See, we have, to, we have to start moving beyond this safe version of, of Christianity that we've got, where we're afraid of everything. And we need to ask the Lord, Lord, teach me the truth behind these things. Because wickedness, wickedness, and a friend of mine teaches on this, the word wickedness is just like a wick. It's something that's twisted. So they've taken something and twisted it. But what is Jesus' real version of it? What is the real thing that's behind it? What is the thing that he wants to reveal? Because he wants knowledge to flood the earth. His goodness to flood the earth. He wants us to know how to function fully. Whoa. So what am I saying? This example in Mo, with Moses in Numbers 21 and Jesus, Jesus took something that the enemy had twisted and revealed his glory through it. He's going to reveal his glory. And we can't say anymore that these things are not accessible, that the spirit realm isn't open, that we can't walk with angels, that we can't understand technology and crystals and all these other things because he wants to show us heaven. He wants to show us how it works. He wants to show us. And that means your mind is going to be blown. I prophesy now that the spirit of revelation is coming on this church in a profound way. If you, if you connect to this mountain, if you connect to this parentage, the spirit of revelation is going to come on you. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Young people, you are going to be great in the Lord and in the power of his hand. You're going to be great indeed. And the words will be like arrows and the words will be like fire and the words will penetrate. Because maturity is not how much you've studied, it's how much you've been in His presence. And God is raising up a company here that live in His presence. A company here, yeah, that live in the clouds. Wow. So another example of mystery is in the time of Jesus, they weren't allowed to go to the, Jew, uh, the Gentiles. One day... Peter's on the rooftop, he, he, he smells the food and falls into a trance. So he got whacked off the thought of eating. That happens to me. If you give me a donut, phew, I'm gone. Listen, he, he got whacked and he got overwhelmed. He sees the heavens open and all these unclean animals. And God says, eat. He says, I can't eat that, that's unclean. And the Lord says afterwards, don't call unclean what I've called clean. And a man shows up and says, you've got to go to a Roman house. He's not allowed to go to a Roman house. He goes to a group of Romans who worship Zeus or whatever, and he's there. They so don't know God, they bow down to try and worship him. But God saw their heart. Their theology was bad, but their hearts were right. And God looks at the heart. And he shows up and he says, I don't need, this is his speech, it's terrible. He says, I don't know why I'm even here. <laughs> and it says, as he's talking, the spirit is poured out on everyone in the room. Everyone in the room. Everyone in the room. At what point did they even say, Jesus, come into my heart? Yes. It seems like God doesn't behave like us. It seems like God does the things he wants to do. See, he doesn't violate his word, but he violates our understanding of it. Because he always wanted that the Gentiles would be filled and flooded with the presence of God. He always wanted that the whole world would be included in Christ. He always wanted that one died for all, therefore all died in him. He always wanted a big family. He always wanted, like Psalm twenty-two twenty-seven says, all the nations will turn and remember. To remember something, it means you have to know it already. Yes. 
all the nations will turn and not discover, they will remember. What does that mean? It's already written in them. It's encoded in them. It's inside their DNA. It's inside their breath. And we're going to trigger them to remember. Salvation's changing. That's what happened when Peter went to that house. Cornelius, they remembered who they were. They remembered. Oh. So God's going to do things. What if, what if you have a vision and God says, go there, go here, and it doesn't follow your understanding? This is why we have to know the Lord. We can't know about the Lord. We have to know the Lord. The way of getting out of deception is not by fearing life. It's embracing life. It's embracing the spirit of life. It's by embracing that he is good. It's embracing trusting in the Lord, knowing the Lord, following in the Lord. Yeah! I'm containing my joy for your sake right now. I'm powering up, I'm powering up, I'm powering up. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, I'm nearly done. Are you guys okay so far? Can I just point out I'm just quoting scripture? So what kind of people should we be and how should we handle the future? I want to tell you now, I've got good news. You're all going to make mistakes. Get that over with right now. Because no one can be creative without making mistakes. No one can learn without growing. No one can master something without playing. And listen, where we're going next isn't perfectionism. It's life, and life is messy. Love, life is unpredictable. Life is chaotic. Life is beautiful. You know, my house is full of life, which pretty much means as soon as I tidy my house, the kids mess up the house. The kids mess up the house. And if you want to see God do stuff, this is what it says in Proverbs 14.4. It says, when there are no oxen, the stall is clean. But much is produced by the strength of an ox. What does that verse mean in very polite English? If you want a big ox that, that pulls and breaks through and shifts and goes, oh, oh, then there's going to be a lot of poop. If you want, don't want the power of an ox, you can have a nice clean stall, but it's dead. It's dead. It's dead. If this church is going to be a living Reformation church, you're going to have power for breakthrough. Just don't worry about the crap. Crap happens. Crap happens. Just deal with it. Just deal with it. And you don't blame the ox. You just shovel it away. Show and use it for manure. Use it for manure. Use it for fertilizer. See, we, we embrace our mistakes and we learn from them. We learn. Ah, ah, we learn from our mistakes. We should not fear mistakes. We should embrace the joy of learning, the joy of advancing, the joy of moving forwards. So I'm going to end with one story. And this is such a powerful story. I've been in it so many times, I get whacked off it. Oh. It's in Matthew. In Matthew, listen, I want you to know, firstly, before I read this story, don't be freaked out if someone that's really powerful in spirit makes a mistake. Because Peter, Jesus said, who do you think I am? And they go, some say Elijah, some say John. But he says, but who do you say I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. And they all go, whoa. And he, Jesus says, this was not revealed to you by men. This was revealed to you by heaven. Now look what happens in the next thing. He starts sharing from that moment, I'm going to suffer on the cross. Wow, can you feel it? Spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation. Wow. 
This is the amazing thing. He just had the greatest revelation. And then what does Jesus say? I'm going to start suffering. I'm going to be crucified. And he says, no way, God, Jesus, you'll never go to the cross. And what does he say? Turn away from me, Satan. What am I saying? Don't be afraid when you make a mistake. He had the greatest revelation one minute and the worst revelation the next. But he was still the rock. He was still the rock. You are still the rock. You are still the rock. You will stand the test of time. You will stand the test of time. This church will stand the test of time. What happens in Elo, Elo will stand the test of time. It will remain. Mistakes may happen, but love wins. Love wins. Love wins. Love wins. Love wins. wins. Have I got five more minutes? I want to share this one last story. And it's from Peter. I love it. I love it. It's Peter again. It's so good. Listen, this is such a good story. It's in John 21. This is how powerful love is. I'm going to hit you with it because this will help you. This will transform you if you can get this. That there's no punishment for us. There's no punishment for mistakes in the new creation. There's no condemnation in the new creation. He's called you clean. He's removed your sins. He didn't just cover it. He removed your sins. He put them out of sight. You are innocent. You are perfect. You are born from Zion. You are clean. You are righteous. You are through and through as he is. So are you as he is. So are you as he is. So are you. And this is what happened with Peter. Wow. I vibrated. Oh, my body's vibrating. I can't contain it. Oh. Oh. I just want to end with this one story that's so powerful, I don't know what to do with it. How would you feel if your number one rock disciple then goes and denies you three times? And they say, I don't even know you, Ryan. I don't know Pastor Ryan. That guy sucks. No way. No, I don't know who that guy is. And he denied him three times. How does Jesus handle mistakes? I want to show you how Jesus handled mistakes. This is what he does. Not only does he deny Jesus, he goes back to his old way of life as a fisherman. And not only does he go back to being a fisherman, he takes all the disciples with him. How does Jesus handle all of his disciples now going back to their old jobs? And Peter's denied him. And it says they're fishing and there's no fish. No glory. There's no glory on going back. What does Jesus do? He doesn't accuse them. He goes, how's that working out for you? They go, we've been fishing, no fish. And he said this. Put the net in the other side. And he blessed them in their mistake. He honored them in their mistake. He cherished them in their mistake. Because they were still his people. They were still his friends. They were still his disciples. They were still the ones that he loved. They were still the heroes of the faith. They were still going to change the world. They were still powerful. They were still anointed. And in that moment, he put 153 fish in the nets. What happened then? Peter 
got all of his stuff together and jumped in the water and said, I am never going back. Grace has stolen my heart. Grace has won my heart. Love has won my heart. Grace has stolen my heart. Love has won my heart. He has possessed me. He has won me. He has won me. That is how we handle and honour people that are making poor choices. We embrace them. We embrace them. We bless them. We honour them. We pursue them. What did Jesus do next? He made them breakfast. He gave them breakfast. He didn't mention what they were doing. He loved on them so much. And only one thing did he want to know. And there's only one thing he wants to know from you. Do you love me? Do you love me? Amen. I don't know what to do with that, but I'm challenging everyone right now. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Listen, listen. This is not for everyone. Justin wanted to preach to all. But I understand. Not everyone will want something like that. Not everyone will want a Jesus who will not condemn you when you make mistakes. I mean, I mean this is not for the perfect people who never fall from time to time. But, 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 but if you're that person and, and, and you did something you're not supposed to. Said some bleep words you're not supposed to say. Do some stuff you're not supposed to do. How many of you have been there? If you have been there, I'm telling you, there's glory waiting for you. Don't listen to the lie of the devil. The end is not yet. The best is yet to come. There's glory with uh, the future is what God wants for you. So if you are that person, run down to the front now.